Hi, this is John. This video is an introduction to CNC machining for components used in hobby rockets. We're going to see a couple of different things that we can easily make using 2.5D CNC routing that are common parts of rockets. In high power rocketry, we're constantly building flat structures from materials, particularly plywood, G10, and aluminum. And we have developed the techniques over the years and refined them pretty well, measuring, marking, using a drill press, using band saws or jigsaws, and files to get the shapes. And those work well. But there's increasingly available access to CNC routers and other computer numeric controlled equipment, which allows us to take a step in terms of accuracy and repeatability that is very hard to achieve with hand marking, measuring, and hand tool techniques. An electronics bay plate, standard centering ring, any diameter, very high precision. A complex centering ring, which has tabs for the fins and a mark for alignment. Again, any number done with very high precision. A mounting plate for CD3 CO2 cartridge made out of aluminum. Again, any number, very high precision. An electronics bay plate, again, cut out of aluminum. And other pieces to make the whole electronics bay out of aluminum. I had some trepidation about making this video because this isn't likely a tool that you're going to buy for your shop. I'm not going to buy one for my shop. They're too expensive and they take up too much space. However, access to community workshops such as the Tech Shop, which now has a dozen locations, make these tools more widely available, and I think it's worth introducing the concepts of CNC routing for rocketry. Of course, there's a bunch of new terminology. CNC itself stands for Computer Numeric Control and basically just means using a computer to direct tool movements instead of running them by hand through control wheels. Computer-aided drafting is just drawing your parts using 2D or 3D software. For the CNC router, 2D software is fine and I'll be using Adobe Illustrator in these examples. Computer-aided manufacturing is really just the process of taking your drawings in using another computer program to generate the codes that are necessary to make the machine do the moves and cuts that it takes to produce those parts. The number of axes that can be controlled on a machine provides the range of movements it's capable of. The machines we're looking at have three axes, X, Y, and Z, which allow you to move the head back and forth across and along the table and raise or lower it towards the table. These combinations give the ability to cut pretty much any shape that can be cut from a single side of the part. And finally, the cutting tools are the sharp edges that actually cut into your material. In the case of a CNC router, the piece is stationary and the head is moved around, meaning that the cutter moves and the workpiece stays still. We'll be using what are called end mill cutters, but there are other shapes such as ball mills that are round or V bits that are pointed. The Tech Shop has ShopBot CNC routers. On these machines, the X axis is the long axis, the Y axis is across, and the Z axis is up and down relative to the table surface. Here are the parts we're going to make. There's a ring and a plate that form part of an electronics bay. Of course it's nice to be able to cut precise parts, but it's particularly nice for parts that made together. These three holes are going to be a perfect fit with each other and we don't even have to remember the orientation. So it's much easier to do a CNC part this way and get a perfect result than the measuring marking and hoping you get it just right of handwork. Now instead of in the shop, 
we start at the computer. Our first step is CAD, where we'll draw the parts. Here I'm using Adobe Illustrator 2D vector drawing and plan out the cutting sequence. We're drawing the parts in a top view and it's important to keep track of the X and Y axis. Generally in page drawing programs X is across and Y is up. In Illustrator's case the origin is in the lower left. Our first set of cuts is using a 1 8 inch end mill to form the small holes of various diameters. Our second path is also with an eighth inch end mill, but this time it's a dado, a slot that doesn't go all the way through, into which the slice of tubing will fit. Our third path, this time with a quarter inch end mill, cuts all the way through and removes the inside of this ring. And then finally, we cut out both the ring and the plate with again a quarter inch end mill around the outside. The cam step takes our drawings that we produced and uses them as a basis to create the cuts or the g-code files that are actually sent to the router. First we see the two paths with the eighth inch tool then the two paths with the quarter inch tool which need to be saved to separate files because this machine is not capable of doing automatic tool changing. One nice thing is we can check a simulation of the parts to make sure they're actually going to be produced in the way we expect. And finally, we save out the two cut files for the eighth inch and the quarter inch end mill tools. We're going to cut our parts out of six millimeter Baltic birch plywood. This is readily available from hobby stores or better stock lumber yards. In this case, I bought this from Tower Hobbies. It's Midwest plywood, six millimeter birch ply. This stuff is great because it's got two good sides, no voids, and a high number of plies. It's a good quality material for building things. Six millimeter plywood is just under a quarter inch. So when I plan for the cuts, I want to cut cleanly through. So I'm going to set the cut depth for cutting all the way through to be a quarter inch. So we'll overcut a little bit. That means in order to avoid marring the surface, we need to use a sacrificial baseboard. So I'm going to fasten the plywood piece from which the parts are going to be cut to the sacrificial surface with double-sided tape. This double-sided tape is surprisingly strong and will hold our pieces together. So when we cut out the rings, they'll stay on the base plate just by the adhesion from the double stick tape. Now these two are firmly stuck together and if we overcut the part, which we are going to a little bit, we'll cut into the baseboard and not damage the surface of the tool. Another thing I like to do is drill a hole in the corner so that we can screw this down to the bed. Some tools have vacuum hold downs and that's not necessary, but a little extra security to keep the part from moving around, even in the case of vacuum hold down, is a good thing. Now we have our stock to cut mounted on a base plate and we have our G-code files on a thumb drive ready to head over to the facility and use the tool. Here we are at the shop bot. You can see the router on his carriage, the long bed, and how I fasten the workpiece down with screws to hold it in place. Speaking of the bed, it's important to remember the axes. So the long axis of the tool is along the X across, across the short distance is the Y, and Z is of course up. Some people remember it with a finger, but I find it's just as easy to remember. Long axis X, cross is Y, up is Z. The first thing we do is set X and Y axes to zero position. 
So we want the zero position of the tool to correspond to the origin when we drew the part. Again, x increasing, y increasing. So the part that we drew like this will be like this on the table when it's cut out. Okay, we just made our first pass with the eighth inch end mill. We're going to make a second pass with a quarter inch end mill to cut out the parts. We'll keep the X and Y position the same, install the new cutting tool, redo the Z, and then do the second cut. And now I've installed the cutting tool for the second pass. This is a quarter inch end mill. We're going to keep the same X and Y, and it's just going to make another set of cuts on the exact same layout as the first set of cuts. And that's all there is to it. We pop our pizzas out, release them from the tape, and then a little cleanup, and they're good to go. Now back at home, we clean up the fuzzies on the edges with a little sandpaper, and our parts are done. So I hope this video gave you a feel for what you can do with CNC routing. Of course, there's many more details when you actually get into it. Things like feeds and speeds, the types of cutters, number of flutes, material selection, etc. But this gave you the basics of the process that you would go through to make a part from CNC. And the rest are really just details. So I encourage you to check out techshop.ws website, see if there's a location near you, or if there's some other facility that might give you access to CNC equipment. It definitely is nice to make parts this way.